two. Ultimately, it says either the pattern is in this class or in that class, or the pattern is in this class, you know, or in this class. That is a non-solution pattern given a non-solution Or the pattern is in this class uh, you know, uh, versus this class. Okay? It's switched from this to this semi So this kind of class recognition and dynamic pattern classification can be done by SIS. So that means that once you do the experimental design, you decide you are going to have 5,000 experiments. And then you just tell this tell SIS to carry up this 5,000 experiments, and then you go home. And then you come next morning, and then it will give you a table that to say out of those 5,000 experiments, in which cases you got the whatever, which class of behavior. And then it's up to you to decide because you are saving a lot of time and effort by not having to run the experiment one by one and looking at it individually one by one and deciding. And also you have the problem of subjectivity. People will tell you that you were just choosing whatever was more convenient for you because uh, you are doing the quality of your life. So, all right. So you can, this is something you can experiment with and do some, again, if you want to some project or research in testing to what extent this can be used in real, actual uh, policy design of a given model and what when it will fail, when it can work, or some sort of comparison between these two, or some sort of including these two, any, 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 any methodology can be used along the line. But in general, we can do pattern oriented, we can now do. Quite recent, we just developed a couple of years ago. We can now start daily, start doing it. From growth to an S shaped growth mode, from an uncontrolled growth. So you say, This is great, new policy is this. But what you are doing is this you are rerunning a model typically from scratch, from time zero. That's the kind of the A of the alphabet of, of policy analysis. That's how we start doing it. Okay. So this is what I call naive policy analysis. You take the model, this abstract naive policy analysis. You take the model, run it again with a new policy, with a new strategy. And that's, in theory, it's a nice theoretical work in level. But the problem is this, how can you implement in real life? If you're doing a real life implementation, you cannot go back to time zero and start run, so to speak, the real simulation from scratch. You see the problem? There is an initialization and transition problem here. So in reality, the problem looks like this. Take this problem, or take this problem, or take this problem. In reality, the problem is like this. You know, they, you started this project because you had a problem, a real data, let us say, or a simulated data. Let's, there's a real data, and then there's some real data look like, let's, let's plot them both. There's a real data that was, you know, like this. Some, some, this is now. You see? And you build a model to understand, now here is the model. You build a model to understand, let us say, an excellent fitting model, right? Um, to understand what mechanisms cause this, and then you project the future dynamics, and you say, in the future, if you continue like this, you'll do this. You have to say this is your market shape. And then you do the policy analysis to change, in this case, to change this into this. But this is not quite valid. This, you cannot do this anymore. So the real system is, the real question is, can you switch somewhere around here to a new policy so as to be in this? You see, is this possible? The two are not the same questions. You should use some sort of switching structure, what I call the mid-simulation, right? Because in reality, that will happen in mid-life, like mid-life, right? Again, in mid-life, in mid-simulation, you switch to a new policy. The inertia 
of the variables are different here than they are here. The initial condition, the existing forces and imbalances, imbalances and the inertia of the system, momentum, is very different here than it's here. So switching here is not the same as switching there. So for that reason, you find the same is true for this one. Do you see? This one is okay. I, I'm running the new policy which is stable, perfect. So that's not the question. The question is now you are here. Now you are here. Let us see. And, and, and this is already happening. The question is when you switch to a new policy here, will I get this? I doubt. Or will I even get this? Or will I get this? Or will I get this? Or maybe I may even get something crazy like this due to this switching from, not in a linear system, but in some non-linear system, you can have some very, very strange problems as we talk about the relative When you do it, how you do it makes a lot of difference. Exactly when you do it and how you do it. Well, so the next question that takes us to this very issue takes us to the question of, very interesting question of, what is the transition diagram? Transition dynamics is really basically for policy transition analysis. It's a, it's a research topic in itself. It's an applied research topic and it's a also theoretical, uh, wide open research question, not analyzed too much. What? What's the formula way of analyzing this? transition dynamics. How can I analyze? What are the key issues here? How can I? Well, the key issues is, of course, there are some clear parameters here. One is what? When? When? To switch. When? This is my switch. When to switch to new policy? Right? When? This is, this is an analysis in itself. Shall I switch here? Or in, in a month? Or in three months? Or after six months? This depends on your analysis of the movements in the system and when the optimal time to switch from a dynamical perspective to a new policy. What's the most stable way of switching to a new policy? When? The next question is, in what period, in what this transition period, you're not going to change one morning. You know, that's the extreme, but right? instantaneous change is, is an extreme, is an exception, not a rule. You cannot just go to a, to a real organization and say that what? But that's very rare, that only happens you know, one more with the change of the computers or something like that. But that's rare. So, in general, transition will take some time. Naturally. Okay. Restructuring of the system will take some time. So that, so this is how long uh, transition can be gradual because of physical delays and constraints, or because you want it to be that way. The two are not the same. You deliberately design it that way. You calculate the response of the existing system, the reaction of the existing system to a new policy, and you deliberately design it sort of piecewise and gradual. So that's called grand, gradual policy transition. So then, then you don't switch at a point in time, but you sweat, gradually switch over a period of, I don't know, three months or six months or one month, whatever. How long is another interesting question. Should there be a policy transition period, phase, and how long should that phase be? 
And that depends also from the problem of many factors. When you do experiments with models, you will see that it does make a lot of problems. Right? Right? Well, of course, to, to appreciate this, one has to model the realism of the implementation of the policy. Well, which, uh, which will be, which will I talk about implementation, but uh, let me just say a few words about that, even here, more, more theoretically at the state. Here is what I mean. Policy transition, one of the components of policy transition dynamics that are geared more towards real implementation is the following. When you construct a model, the original model for policy analysis. You model a system, now pay attention to this. Here we are talking about a sort of a meta model issue, or, or like, yeah, you should call it the best word for it, meta model. It's a meta modeling problem, a high level modeling problem. You build a model of an organization, of a problem, to analyze this problem, one of these problems, right? You do all the, this nice work of model construction, validation, analysis, and design. And then you come up with new policy, okay? suggested improvement policy. You model the system as it is, and you did a great job of modeling the system, and you did a great job of deriving this new policy. But what you didn't model is the following, because it was outside the purpose of your scope of your model. You did not model explicitly what the system would do, how the system would react if you intervened with the system with a new policy. That's not part of the original question. Do you understand? The original question is like birth control problem or, or inventory ordering problem, oscillation inventory, so forth. Now you have a meta question. The question is, the system, what happens if I go to the system one month and I tell them intervene, it's called intervention, and I tell them to change their inventory ordering policy, or to restructure their marketing policy, or to restructure their production department in certain ways, and you start doing this, the question is, how would that system react to me? This is a meta level question. Okay? The reaction response of the existing system to an intervention, to a particular intervention. That question is actually also a part of policy transition dynamics. It's also part of, of course, actual implementation. You should consider that as implementation. But there is a theoretical aspect to it. In the sense that you may actually model that as well. Do you see why I call it a meta model? So you not only have your original model, here's another research question that has not been really uh, too much, enough perhaps in the past. Well, this is a, actually a conceptual design question, it's a big question. How can I build this sort of a meta model to first build a model, analyze a system, come up with an improvement policy, and then after I find the improvement policy, then I start, I build another model that will model how it will be similar, in a sense, in many ways to the existing model, but it will be quite different in other ways, because now I must include the, the purpose is different now. The dynamics of the reaction of the existing system, response of the existing system, to this particular policy intervention. That's another problem in itself, right? The dynamics of system response to an intervention. That's a kind of a meta model. So that you can do it to some extent in laboratory before you go to implementation. You can do some theoretical work there before you actually test the implementation. So what I call meta model of system response to new policy. New policy. I always say that Jay Paul has a great line. You know, he has been so critical of the existing of, of systems, right? Poorly performing systems for 
50 years, over 50 years. But he also has a, has, has, has a, has a line that almost contradicts. He says, it's very difficult to change existing systems because existing systems, if, since they exist, they exist for reasons. There are all sorts of feedback loops, control loops, negative feedback loops, that cause this, that system to persist for so many years. Right? So they, they exist for a reason. They are not, they're random, these organizations, social organizations or private companies or, or, or even individuals. Individual behavior exists for reason. So when you change them, know that you are fighting these existing structures and existing feedback. Intervention is actually fighting the existing system that is feedback structures. So that's why it's difficult. There's a theoretical reason why, there's a conceptual reason why it's difficult to change this, why they will react. Not because they are conditions. Not because they are easy. Uh, the next item is policy sensitivity. The next important item in a notion in policy analysis is policy sensitivity or policy robustness. Now, the policy is sensitive. Here we are testing. Let me just say what was this first. Policy sensitive means you, you test the sensitivity of the policy to non policy parameters that you are assuming. That is, the environment of the policy. You are testing how sensitive is my suggested policy to the assumed environment. <laughs> Assume that it's very sensitive. What does it mean? Sensitivity here means the following. Does the uh, result, the improvement result of my suggested policy, does it persist even in the what? Significantly changed environmental conditions. If it persists, if the policy improvement result persists, even under significantly changed environmental parameter conditions, and I say my policy is insensitive to the environmental parameters, right? Is it good or bad? Huh? It's good. So it's insensitive, that means it's robust to the assumed environment. In other words, the policy, or we say it's resilient, it's a resilient policy, it's a robust policy, it's an insensitive policy to the environment, which means it's a robust policy, is one that will work in a wide range of assumed environmental conditions. A poor policy, a sensitive policy says what? I will only work if the competitor's price is $7.5. If the competitor's price is seven dollars, I pay. If the competitor's dollar is eight dollars, I pay too. But if it's seven point five dollars, I am optimal. And I am optimal. And you can derive an optimal policy. Perfect, you can prove it's optimal if the competitor's price is seven point five. That's one policy I'm I'm marking. Okay? Here I am selling you two policies. Which one would you buy? One policy is proved to be optimal, optimal, exactly optimal, proved to be optimal, if the competitor's price is between 7.3 and 7.6 dollars. If you go out, you know, it's a wild guess, it can do anything, it doesn't work. Huh? Yeah, you don't know. Well, policy B is a policy that's not optimal, but it works reasonably well. Even if the competitor's price is down to $5, it's up to $8 or $9. <coughs> now, you may prefer B, which you know is not optimal, but because it's robust, you prefer it. You see? Because the world is uncertain, you would prefer 
یعنی رینج و ولی دو باست این ریزنبل امپروبوت این پولسی تو ای اپتیم امپروبوت دیت اونلی ولید فور ای نرو رینج و تن In general, we prefer robust policy. Robustness of a policy to environment, assume the environmental condition is a big issue. And we can do that again by standard tests applied to policy. The last item is implementation. After you do everything, implementation, and here, Finally, <coughs> I want that up to this point, by the time you are down to implementation, I am hoping that you are convinced that 90% of such modeling studies will never get to the point where they will change the world, right? But if you are not, now I try to convince yourself that okay? So you are probably convinced that, I mean, after all these hurdles, you are convinced that all this is by and large, academic and abstract. And it's very difficult to change a real system in a realistic and sustained way as a result of a scientific model. But it's possible, but quite different. And now, after you pass all the hurdles, now there are implementation hurdles. The implementation says, even if you do all this, all this, all these, and this as well. The meta-analysis, you know, timing of the new policy, phasing of the new policy, period, starting point, and response of the system participant. Even then, you will have problems. First of all, what is realism of the policy? You see, the policy may not be realistic, when you go to the social, psychological setting of the real environment that you are modeling. In other words, as you model the system, whether it's a production department, or a marketing department, or whether it's a pollution problem, whether it's a you know, municipal uh, uh, traffic management problem, or water planning problem, or it is a company level problem, or, or a social problem, or ecological problem, the problem is you are modeling typically the all the social technical social technical that is social technical economic factors that are involved in the problem and system dynamics is one of the tools that's most comprehensive in that sense it will not be just purely economic it will not be purely technical, it not be purely engineering, it not be purely monetary, it include all the, what you say, we include things that are important, not things that we know, that we specialize. So that's why these are social economic, social technical economic models. Okay? Even though you pay special attention to include all these social, technical, environmental, economic factors, you naturally will be omitting some very important personal, social, psychological variables that will exist in the day-to-day -day operations of that system. You cannot model it. Okay? Because they are typically just, I mean, beyond, much beyond the scope of, or scope of the study. They have almost Nothing to do with the problem itself, but a lot of to do with the implementation. You see? They are only relevant when you come on Monday morning and you start talking about what? Changing the system. But they have nothing to do when you look at it from the perspective of the problem, they have nothing to do with the actual inventory dynamics and, and, and whatever the population growth so forth. So these are the social psychology that are involved, or group psychology and all that, and, and ownership issues, you know, identity issues, identity crises, and, and all sorts of capricious behaviors, or, or, or you know, um, uh, 
sometimes irrational reaction, you know, camps that exist, historical biases, the way you look, the way you talk when you go there. Right? You cannot model that. So for all these reasons, the implementation has all sorts of problems. We have all sorts of problems, social especially, and psychological problems that you cannot hope to capture in the model itself. If you do, if you do try that, then the model will go out of hand, up, from the out of bound. Mm -hmm. So, for that reason, we must acknowledge that implementation is a big issue. Implementation itself is a uh, huge, huge problem, burden, and before successful system improvement. Improve. You can do all this, and then you go on Monday morning to this real organization, real structure, real system, and you start changing the system. You find out that you are not the I mean,